we are back with a brand new episode of the Pass the Game Challenge. Seven developers from around the world will make a complete video game, but they are not allowed to communicate. This leads to some of the craziest game projects we've ever seen We've made FPSs, horror games, zombie smashing multiplayer games, open worlds. What will we make this time around? Will we even finish this project, or will the lack of communication lead to a broken and unfinished mess? Again, we found some amazing creators, so let's start with developer number one, Dryden. Hey there, I'm Dryden Thomas, and I am the sole developer of Lighthoof, a melancholy metroidvania featuring ricochet dashing, elemental magic, and a weird progression system. It is on Steam right now. Or you can check out my YouTube channel where I make videos about game development craft in general. So first of all, huge thank you to Blackthorn Prod for the invite and for the huge honor and responsibility of being first. Now, all of my dev experience is in 2D side scrolling, so naturally I'm gonna go completely the opposite direction with this project. I've always wanted to do a tactics game and I don't think one has been done for these challenges, so it's time. I based it on chess. I thought it would be funny to have this kind of incompetent king who wanders around while all of his subjects and the queen try to babysit him to make sure he doesn't die. So I got this grid generator going and created a library of functions that lets you target a tile based on a starting coordinate. Then I added pieces that you could move around by clicking and traps that would blow you up. The first three character designs were the king, the queen, and the pawn. The king kind of wanders around aimlessly, the queen can throw out lures to draw the king, and the pawn can reveal and disarm any traps. I realized at this point that the queen was so tall that she was obscuring the pieces above her. So I flipped the camera around to an isometric view and I realized that looked way cooler. But then I had to redo basically everything I'd already done. But that's game dev for ya. So I added this bishop that could bless pieces and make them temporarily invulnerable, and then a rook that can build and destroy walls. On the player feedback front, I got some basic ugly UI started. There's VFX for when the king is lured or for when a piece burns up feedback for winning and losing, and then I fleshed out this level design system and made about 10 levels real quick just to teach the other devs how the game works. Lastly, my main thing is music, and I had some time, so I made the track you're hearing right now to bring out the medieval vibes. I cannot wait to see where the other devs take this game, and if anyone wants to find me, I am Light of the Game on YouTube, Threads, and Instagram. Hey guys, we've made a completely free game development course for all of you that want to learn how to make video games. It's our gift to the amazing Black and prod community and in it you'll learn the fundamentals of using the unity game engine by actually building three small video games we'll create a really cool arcade style reflex game a fireball throwing simulator and a beautiful mini city builder it's really the perfect first steps if you want to become an indie game developer yourself and the link is in the description with that said let's continue with developer number two Hey yo, I'm Joe Sullivan, the creator of Floromancer Seeds and Spells, a cozy apocalyptic game where you grow spells and use them to save your forest from deforestation. Check it out on Steam. Something I hadn't seen before is this blend of real-time and turn-based mechanics. So I leaned into that and made some real-time assets. I started with a fireball that ricochets off the walls and damages pieces. Then I made some levels where I combined them with the Rook's wall-building ability. Next, I started working on a spike pit that cycles on and off so players will need to time their character's movements. Then I took some time to upgrade the font and the UI to match the game. Lastly, I made a few new levels to teach and test the new mechanics. First, I drew them onto grid paper, and then I programmed them into the game. Thank you so much, Blackthorn Prod. I can't wait to do the next one. And if it's your thing, grow spells in Floromancer on Steam. Hey, I got invited back! Hey, I'm Ollie from Mashup Games. Last time I was here, I made some changes that a lot of people understandably weren't very happy with. But this time I've learned from my mistakes, I've grown as a person, and I'm ready to behave. When I first opened the project, I was very surprised. Not only is it a puzzle game, which we rarely see in these challenges, but also so much of the game is already there so early on. So in this round, I decided to focus on improving some of the UI and visuals. The first thing I wanted to tackle was the walls of the level. The cubey walls feel like they can sometimes block or distract away from the contents of the level. So I darkened the texture and I flattened them. 
Now because I flattened them to one face, it means the walls that are facing away from the camera don't get drawn, and clears up a lot of that dungeon space. I don't get any issue with changing the camera set to perspective. Also, I haven't done much with Unity's new input system, so getting this camera zoomed to work with the mouse's scroll wheel took a bit of an embarrassing amount of time. What happened quite often is that when I was testing these things and playing the game, I noticed the king often had a habit of wandering to the end. Either that, or it would just wander into a trap. As a player, I found it very stressful to guide this wandering king when time can be a very punishing factor. I found someone had given the king two different modes, wander and turn based. So the next big thing I implemented was expanding this so it's not just the king, but also the other pieces are affected too. You can now move the pieces and use each of their abilities once per round. When you're done, you hit the finish round button. The king moves, and then the next round starts. I added this introduction to each round that would tell you what round you're on and how many turns you have remaining. However, I haven't had the time to fully play through and calculate what a fair amount of turns for each level was, so for the moment it's just default to 5. I haven't removed the old type of movement. Instead, I've put it in the main menu as an extra option option. You can select between turn-based or the original mode, which I called chaotic. The main menu has this logo I quickly whipped up called King's Game, but I put the word temp in the name of the file, so hopefully it's open for someone else to replace and improve if they want to. The win and fail UI screens have been improved, as well as the pause menu. I've moved the action buttons from the corner of the screen to just below the piece, as I thought this would be more user-friendly. In turn-based mode, each piece except the king has a number next to them. This is an indicator of how many actions a piece can take in the round, though after implementing it, I realise there isn't really much need for it. Oh, looks like my time is up. If you've enjoyed my company, why not check out my channel after the video ends? Okay guys, the project is coming along really nicely, but as always, things get increasingly exciting with each new developer. Before we continue though, make sure to like and subscribe. It's an enormous support to the channel and it will allow us to keep making videos and actually make them more ambitious or crazy. We've got some insane projects in the works that we cannot wait to share with you all. With that said, let's move on to the next creator. Ah, nice music. But mostly I feel I want to work on the sound effects. So we want a character selection sound for Queen, the King and the Pawn. Maybe different ones. And I think I will make those using my new mic because I really enjoy using that. Aha, uh -huh. very well. At your service. At your service. When a character falls into a trap, we need a sound for that too. So let's let me remember what the king sounded like. Now that we have a couple of vocal samples, let's pick the best one of each, do a little bit of processing on them, then we can move on to the sound effect. Very well. Ugh, not again. At your service. Uh -huh. Sir, we found a trap. Assign these two to a new mixing group called Music. The Music group will get a duck volume. Now, when the queen walks into the trap, we should hear the sound effect a little more clearly because the music should duck down. Let's see if it works. Oh dear. There we go. He's so distracted. Okay, cool. I am Swampy, a 16 years old game developer and YouTuber. And today I have 7 days to continue the game that you saw with other devs. Wait, actually 4 days because of school and other garbage in my life. Anyway, after importing the project and playing the game a bit, I decided to delete all the game and to restart from another whoa 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 calm down. It's just a prank. So anyway, I first noticed that there are no maps in the game. Like, it's kinda dark. <laughs> so the first thing to do was, well, you guess it? Make a map that suits the game theme. To do that, I imported this medieval environment, then created a shadow shader for 2D sprites, made this new world model, cut. and played a bit with post-processing just to make the game look a bit more sexy. Oh, and as always, I discreetly added this volumetric lights package. Okay, next step was to add a camera intro and an idle animation for the camera. And I just use a simple animation for this. And after quickly fixing some bugs like this one, the game was looking way better. But do you know what time is it? It's time to add some new code traps. That's what I'm saying. 
To do that I first made an arrow rain trap. So then you finish your turn, some arrows will land in random positions to stimulate an enemy attack, just like that. Then I made this trap, that is actually just a bomb spike, but with a simple twist, just look at this. And finally, I made this propulsion pad trap, exactly like in Clash of Clans, so then upon steps on this trap, it will be ejected. And the game was starting to look good until I noticed another big problem. Huh? There is also a bishop and rook in the game, but they can do anything except moving. 100. Now, flat right. And this problem took me a while to fix, even if the situation was really simple. I don't know what the previous dev did with them, but they don't have any sounds. And so their scripts can access non-existing sounds. And so because I'm bad at audio, I find it the sounds for the rook. And the sounds for the bishop. Bless you. You can also now use the place ability and the ability of wall construction. And on my last day, I just fixed some more bugs. Like for example, if you do some very specific moves, you can skip some levels for some advanced reasons. Then I did some small particles, camera shake, and started making a red and the pound before running off out of time. You can just follow the player and die, but not attack for the moment. Hey there, I'm Dennis from Cardboard Games and I am making Zen World, a game about building the world from hexagonal tiles that can be as relaxing or as complicated as you want it to be. Okay, so right after opening the project I felt like Chess and Minesweeper had a baby, which was a little too slow and overcomplicated for my taste, so I've decided to nudge it closer to Chess, leaving Minesweeper behind. And speaking of Chess, it is missing a knight, can you believe it? It is iconic, it is a symbol, the logo of chess, and it is easily top 5 best chess pieces of all time. So I've made one. Next up, the chessboard. Right now the grid is being generated in runtime and can only be rectangular. It is cool, but restrictive. I'll shift to pre-built prefabs for each level and remake the movement system to work on non-rectangular grids. It gives more freedom for level decorations as well. Unfortunately, that means that I'll have to redo the whole movement system. At this point, I realized that most of my changes are internal, with nothing to actually show. So I've created a few levels to showcase my non-rectangular grid system, introduced the take mechanic, made pieces respect each other's locations as part of the movement system rework and introduced the take mechanic, as well as tried to fix the ability system as well as I could. Also, the king now loyally follows his queen, making it riskier to use her all the time. And since I've also made enemy pieces and basic AI, I couldn't resist trying this out. And guess what? It uh, actually kinda works? Anyway, that is all the time I've got. Bye! When I first opened the project, I noticed that the art style was all over the place. Pixel art here, cartoon looking characters there. So I took it upon myself to make it all fit together, basing it off of the characters. After tidying up the visuals, I kinda wondered what this game was actually about. But judging off of the level design of the three levels that were in the game, I figured that it must be a puzzle game of some sort. Three levels isn't that much though. Lucky for me, I found some data for eight other levels. But before going on to make the levels, I wanted to make the menu look a bit better and also add a level selection screen. I personally think that the main menu has a lot more charm now rather than just a wall of bricks. But I can't just keep working on the visuals, I also gotta make the actual levels. And since the level making part of this game was really well put together, it was pretty easy to make the new levels. Most of the levels were based off of the level data I mentioned before, and that would say where the placement of characters, traps, the goal, and so on would be. So that's where I experimented a little bit. Let's take a look at this level for example. It's very basic, simple, and really just isn't that exciting. So I just made it bigger. Added more traps and turns, and it already looks a lot nicer and plays a lot better. I basically did this for all the levels except the last three, which I just created for a final test of sorts, which combines all the previous knowledge from the previous levels. Like the traps, the hidden traps, the abilities of the characters and so on. Other than that, I also lightened up the characters a bit to fit the new art style, made some animations for the night, and added an end screen. In the end, I think it turned out pretty good other than some bugs like the king still moving after death in the chaotic mode. But that's, that's not important. 
Wow, 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 this looks so good. Whoever did this environment art, I love you. It looks great. I'm loving these bricks that I think are full on 3D. I was dev number two, but I had no idea. It was already, um, the architecture and foundation for the game were already completely in place. I would have thought I was dev four or five. Oh, wow. These traps look awesome. Very cool. He's so distracted. It's... <laughs> yes! I'm just stoked about this. He's so distractible. Stop. Very well. Okay, I'm pretty obsessed. I'm like, I'm glowing right now. <laughs> How would you guys expand on the game if you were given an extra two months? So there were a couple different directions I could see it going. I think it would be interesting to have like a hit point system for the pieces instead of insta kill, because then you would have a little leeway. Like if you made a mistake, it just, it wouldn't immediately knock you out. Okay. That's your... Oh, I just got totally destroyed. Okay, so this got more chess-like. Oh. Okay, I was not expecting this game to actually become like hard if it was in the turn-based mode. Like I thought that it would be just like super straightforward. I was adding more abilities to the characters, I think, because most of the abilities that I saw in the game, I didn't have time to actually implement. So there was some of them that never actually got into the game. But I think working on the characters' abilities and just expanding on everything in general. Oh, he killed himself. This is uh, it. Yes, this is the run. This is the uh, round. Yes, okay. Hey, get out of here, dummy. Well, I personally just really like making enemies and obstacles. <laughs> uh, so I would continue on that, which would kind of be challenging because I don't know if there's any chess pieces left to make. Maybe I've forgotten one or we'll have to start making them up. I really like the idea of having to time your turns across like the spikes, for example. So I, I think expanding on the mechanics in that direction with just more level design and stuff would be really cool. They are very well timed so that you can get two turns in between. So congrats to whoever tuned that little bit. You wouldn't change it in any like major like design way. Just give more of what there is currently. I think so. I think the idea of a um, you know a chess based puzzle game with some like real time mechanics in it is enough of an idea itself. I think adding any more, it might become m more complicated than I would like to code for. Sounds like a great elevator pitch. A real time puzzle chess like game. Very interesting, very unique. Okay, remember guys, they've actually made a free game development course that you can check out with the link in the description is the perfect first steps if you also want to become a game creator. And yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. We're working on some of our most epic videos yet. We cannot wait to show you all, so stay tuned. Cheers.